Hello, I'm Chris Menard. If you use Microsoft Teams and have meetings, you probably need to watch this video if you don't know the three different roles you have for a Teams meeting. So I've already signed in to my Teams account and I've been invited to a meeting by Carol Martin who also works with me. So here's my account. I have the calendar pulled up over here. Just so you know this, the Teams calendar and your Outlook calendar are in sync. So it doesn't matter whether Carol scheduled this from Teams calendar or from Outlook, it shows on both. If I double click on this meeting before joining it, Carol is the organizer. So you got three roles, organizer, presenter, attendee. Those are the three roles. In this video, I'll discuss the three different roles I'll discuss what they can and can't do. I'll also show you how to take someone that's an attendee that has limited um, features and promote them to a presenter. So one question I'm going to answer right now is the person that scheduled the meeting is the organizer. You can only have one organizer per meeting. Also, another question I get asked, can I transfer the organizer role to somebody else. No, you can't do it before the meeting. You can't do it during the meeting. So one organizer per meeting is the person that scheduled it. I'm going to close this. So before I join this meeting, one of the, one of the people that are invited, I know it still said Chris A. Menard. That is my Gmail, which means outside the organization. So Chris A. Menard is joining right now. That person is an attendee. So when an attendee joins your meeting, that person gets a message. When the meeting starts, we'll let people know you're waiting. That person is in what's called the lobby. Who can admit somebody from the lobby? Because you don't want a lot of people sitting in the lobby outside your organization if you need them in the meeting. The organizer can bring people into the meeting from the lobby, but so can presenters. I'm a presenter. So Carol is not even going to join this meeting. So I'm going to hit join. It's going to ask me first about my video settings and my audio settings. I'm recording right now, so I don't need that. When I hit join now, I'm going to get a message. There's people in the lobby. Remember, I'm a presenter right now. I only have one person waiting, so that's why it shows Chris, Gmail attendee, guests is waiting in the lobby. I could admit Chris right now. I just want to show you what happens when I hit view lobby. It will immediately pull up in the Teams meeting the participant panel, which is right here. <clears throat> I always encourage you to have the participant panel running. I don't care what role you have of the three roles, just open up the participant panel. There is waiting in the lobby, just one person. Do I want to admit them? Yep. I hit the check mark to admit them. So now that attendee is now in the meeting. So just so you know this, I have tweaked my settings. So let me set this the way it may look on yours. If you notice in this meeting is two, there's me, there's the attendee. I'm going to put them actually as an attendee. You'll get a new category over here. So now here's what attendees can and can't do. Here's the good news. An attendee can turn their video on and off. An attendee can turn their audio on and off and an attendee can chat. That is all great because those are the big three for any meeting. What can an attendee not do? They can't remove anyone from the meeting. They can't record the meeting or stop recording. They also cannot um, mute people. They cannot admit anyone from the lobby. So attendees have limited roles, but the the permissions they do have or the permissions they need. So I'm going to give you a couple tips real quick here before I continue. Carol's the organizer. She scheduled this meeting and she didn't show. 
The good news is she at least invited me, and I'm a presenter because I work with her, so we're in the same organization. So if you're scheduling a meeting, if you're the organizer, and you're inviting a bunch of people outside your organization, they'll all be attendees, I highly recommend you invite one or two people inside your organization because they'll be presenters, so they can at least pull people in from the lobby if you don't show, which I just did. I recommend you invite the people that, one, know how to run a team's meeting, and two, somewhat know what the subject is or the topic is in case you can't attend. So a presenter has almost all the same rights as the organizer. I believe an organizer, in fact, I know this, an organizer can run an attendance report, and I can't do that as a presenter. Now, here's another tip. I brought all these attendees in here, and I'm in here as a presenter. So I can share a PowerPoint slide deck. I can share my screen. I have a ton of rights. I can kick people out of the meeting. I can mute people. I can remove people. I can pull people in from the lobby. I can also start and stop recording right here. I can turn on live captions. That's for me, actually. What I wanted to show you, though, is what if one of these attendees needs to present? So all you do is you mouse over that person's name and you change their role to a presenter role. Remember, no one else can be the organizer except Carol. So now when I hit change, you can see this right here. Now, this attendee became a presenter and they can share their screen. Anyway, this is it for my video today. I wanted to make sure we covered these three different roles for Microsoft Teams meetings. And I will put a little cheat sheet. Microsoft has a really nice table about these three roles. I will put that down in the description, the link for that. If you have any questions about Microsoft Teams, please put the questions in the comments down below. I appreciate your time. Have a wonderful day.